Recording. Greetings in the Lord Jesus. He is the Christ, and for my uh, brothers that are in Israel, uh, he is <laughs> the Savior that has come, and he is soon to come again. As always, it is a, a true honor to be with you and to thank you ahead of time for spending time with just a, a simple Cajun. Uh, people have asked about me and where have you come from? What are you doing? All It doesn't matter, but I will uh, show you a picture of, of the background of at least one side of the family. And then those that have followed know that my mom was uh, you know, a lot Cherokee Indian. And I, I want to thank you for your prayers. Uh, some, of the, some of the suggestions you have on uh, remedies remind me of uh, the Cherokee, uh, which I think her go-to was always Vixav and castor oil and uh, I think it was apple cider vinegar and uh, things that you would rather be sick than take, but they, they worked. And so thank you for all your suggestions. I am uh, doing better with uh, a third round of uh, treatment and uh, lots of fluids. And my beautiful bride, the nurse, has had me resting. And then certainly, most importantly, is, is your prayers. Uh, I thank you uh, for so many of you. And I want to welcome you in our wisdom warriors and uh, intercessors from uh, not only across this nation, but in other countries and members of the National War Council, and those that just follow. And I pray that these, uh, the teachings and uh, those words that uh, I'm allowed to share prophetically uh, minister to you, and especially the teachings would help you grow. I'm going to cover, I got all my yellow stickies, so I'm gonna try to get it all done. I have my drink and someone said something about the cup. It was a uh, gift from uh, one of my, uh, good friends that uh, helps me uh, volunteers with the National War Council. Oh. For the 75 year old wisdom warrior that had um, lost her sister, and she is, you are in uh, desperate need because of COVID yourself. You lost your sister to COVID. Uh, I do spend uh, these mornings and others in fasting and in prayer. And so when that was given to me, I certainly lifted it up uh, to the Lord. And uh, quite a while back, someone had written to me um, about, I believe it was their daughter. And I, I think I've gotten past the part that I'm a weeper. You know, I just... From some of my Marine Corps buddies that don't follow me, uh, that's okay. Uh, the Lord, uh, believe me, has broken me down more uh, than the Marine Corps ever did when you know, their goal was to break your spirit, and they did. But the Lord um, had a lot of work to do on, on me. But uh, he had written about uh, this young lady that had Lyme disease and that she was uh, about to lose her faith because it was a struggle. And I will tell you, I wept and wept over it, and, and I took it to the Lord. And um, Kimberly uh, read to me the other day, she said, the same person wrote and asked that you hopefully hadn't forgotten her. And I just want to tell you, I, I've never forgotten her. It's been on my heart. It broke my heart when I received it. So uh, we do pray. Uh, we, we, we petition the throne, even with... You know, all the things I've gone through since Christmas, uh, not only do I believe in healing, but I have been used in divine healing uh, in the spirit. I've seen my hands on fire and a few people that uh, could see uh, they, they saw it. But that's a, that's another matter. But I'm, I'm praying for her. I continue to pray for her. And, and with these teachings, I, I try not to mix the prophetic and the visions with these teachings. So if rest and <laughs> the Lord permits, uh, I, I may do a, uh, a special broadcast on Saturday to address some of those issues. And I, I believe that many of you know that years ago, the Lord had shown me uh, 
uh, a major network that was going to go bankrupt. Um, and some of the turmoil that would happen there. Uh, and then uh, he called it uh, a storm is coming. And then he gave me an update on the storm is coming. It was in 2018. And since then, I've heard a lot of the prophetic, even in movies, say a storm is coming. Uh, so it was interesting. Kimberly was reading something to me uh, because she doesn't read all those. We get thousands and thousands. But because I had had uh, something the Lord was talking to me about, uh, and I wrote it down and I had questions because I, some of the things he talks about, I can research and I'll try to differentiate that today on what he tells me and what he then tells me to go research. Uh, but he started talking to me about uh, every uh, hair on your head is numbered and he went through a whole thing. And so uh, you can see it <laughs> pictures over here and uh, this yellow stick you put on there. So I'd remember it. This was from uh, uh, Sunday uh, on the 30th, just a few days ago. So I'm going to cover that hopefully in, in the prophetic word. And plus it has, you know, for those that do not believe that our father has a sense of humor, Jesus, he does. He, he's, he has a sense of humor. Uh, he's, as I say, he's not a tame lion. Uh, he is a consuming fire, but he loves us unconditionally. And so I, I, there's my notes. I, I, I pray that I get to that maybe on Saturday because of uh, this one particular network is bankrupt. And if they weren't being carried by their parent company, another one bought them out. Uh, I believe they're using their, their loss as a, as a write off. Uh, it's already tanking and, and the viewership. And so the Lord knows ahead of time. And there's also going to be a, a, a Christian uh, major uh, network that will go bankrupt and, and a few are smaller ones um, in their area. They're big, but a few are smaller ones. So if you want to reach us, um, the National War Council, Post Office Box 931, Argyle, Texas, 76226. And um, like I said, I have my handkerchief and I, I seem to be sweating today. Even with uh, today, it's in Dallas and near Denton is where we live. Uh, it's snowing or was snowing, which <laughs> is a prophetic sign within itself. So I'll move forward. My background, and I always uh, say about a simple Cajun and, and a Marine, and, and that is, uh, I won't talk so much on my, on my mom's side. There's a lot of heartache on that. Uh, my dad, as I said, was absent. Uh, he was an alcoholic. But I understood it when the Lord came and, and he talked to me over a long period of time that my dad, uh, right out of boot camp in the Army, was at the Battle of the Bulge uh, fighting. And as an 18 year old uh, young man, he came back uh, an entirely different person. And in those days, I don't believe they even recognize uh, PTSD, uh, post traumatic stress disorder. And so I understand, and, and I have uh, prayed, and, and I prayed for him uh, those last few years before he, he had a, a heart attack and died. But um, growing up in, uh, we say Baton Rouge because it sounds better. <laughs> it's uh, more sophisticated, I guess, but lived in Baton Rouge. But this is a picture. Uh, if, if you're in Louisiana or Cajun, um, this, is, this is like having it made for us. Uh, <laughs> growing up, uh, we had um, a couple relatives that had uh, their campsites on uh, Chinkapin uh, Canal in, in Maripal, Louisiana. And for my dad and his 12 siblings, uh, this is my uh, This is not their house, but it's uh, an older part in um, St. Martinville. Uh, where they grew up on the bayous. And so that was their background. And mo when they moved to Baton Rouge, most of them uh, got uh, union jobs at, a, I believe it was called SO or Standard SO, and then it was Exxon, Exxon Mobil. And this is uh, <laughs> those uh, fishing off the cane pole at night and uh, mosquitoes about as big as your hand, but frog gigging and uh, some of the alligators and then fishing uh, is the way we pass our time and ate, by the way. I know that might disgust some of you, but frog legs, as they say, everything tastes like chicken. And then we'd either get catfish or perch and flay them out and 
than prior. That was that was our food. So um, that was the origination of, of where uh, my family came, and then my mother on the on the, on her side. Uh, I've never forgotten that. And um, so, and the other is I wanted to say uh, I, I, I try to stay away from politics and leave that to uh, the scholar and others. Uh, I was involved for several years in the endorsements, and now I just leave that to them. As I have said before, I, I have no confidence in the Republican Party, nor in the Democratic Party. Uh, some I wonder what percentage this is, of what they are that still support Humpty Dumpty. Uh, you know, it's almost, I think to myself, what does it take? But I, I did want to say that um, I love our truckers. And these are godly people, not like, you know, but these people are American patriots. Let me say that many are godly that love Jesus Christ, but others that do not know him, uh, many of them are American patriots that love this nation. And in this nation, they love in Canada, they love their nation. And of course, they're, you know, the Saul Alinsky, uh, you know, rules for radicals. They're the liberals are following that and casting aspersions and uh, everything else they can uh, for this group. So I just want to say I, I appreciate our uh, truckers and uh, those that, that may, you know, I don't say it all the time, but uh, on my little thing is I still, the farmers are so much a part of my prayer, ranchers, uh, a, a lot of the uh, supply chain and other things being blamed on you, inflation. And I know that that's not the case. I know that uh, your expenses have gone up, uh, parts and supplies and fertilizer, uh, diesel fuel, everything has gone up because of this administration. By the way, purposely done. Now they're realizing uh, they're going to probably get a slacking, so they're trying to do something. And, uh, you know, it, it isn't ironic that just as, as the way Bill Clinton did, uh, that we have a raid on an individual that should have happened several years ago, but now they're desperate to, to show that they're really tough. They're not tough at all. And so they sent in, uh, you know, our special ops people uh, and carried out a mission the way they always do with honor and integrity and uh, mission accomplished. So uh, that's our work. So let me say about today, <clears throat> it will not be easy. It won't be soothing words. I wrote this down so I can write using scripture to flatter or ingratiate yourself to those of influence or affluence. And it seems like that's becoming the thing now is use scripture and build someone else up and twist it around. And it's not only sad, but the Lord, he's had enough of that. It may not happen to you today. It may not happen in the next six months. It's coming. I came out of the cave and into a prophetic role. And today is the prophetic role. Uh, I am called to the Eagle. Uh, I don't run around telling people I'm a prophet. I try. Uh, when we started the National War Council, someone had given me the name, the unknown prophet in Texas. And Greg Holt, our administrator, he said, I really like that. I said, so do I. I'd like to remain unknown. But now with so many of you uh, here and around the world watching, um, it's not me. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And if I get to the point where it's about me, then I'm going to stop and go back to the cave. So for some of you, those that love Jesus Christ and, and follow me, but there are many that follow. And on Monday, I'll tell you, uh, once I gave the prophetic word on Kim Jong-un and uh, on COVID back in 2018, I have uh, it caught the attention of the intel agencies. And so they watch me uh, you know, every broadcast and, and they take note of, of what I say, and especially some of the warnings I've given to the former president of some of the ways that may try to end his life. But if you idolize some people, uh, put them on a pedestal, uh, evangelists, pastors, preachers, teachers, prophets, don't watch. Just go do something else and, and uh, don't even worry about it. Um, so that's, that's today. I had taught... And I love the streams. And then I got to the cisterns and it nauseated me because of the stagnation, uh, the stench, the odor, and just that they were 
people drinking out of that, and, and they became sick, and some perished. So I talked about these. I covered um, Jezebel and Ahab last time and said Laodicea would be today. So if you're looking for a 30-minute one, doubt that's not today. I'm going to cover what the Lord wanted me to so I can move on to some teachings and, and uh, hopefully some prophetic words. <clears throat> The Fallen Ministries in 2022 that he showed me, um, prominent evangelists and uh, pastors and teachers, and uh, I, I will show you how the Lord uh, taught me and how he progressed me through this in love, but very sternly and in judgment to the point that there would be some that would um, pass away behind the pulpit. Um, I'll leave it at that. But this is the way I want to start out. And please, my Brians, I love you so much and I appreciate you. You take notes, you study, and you ask good questions. I can't answer. I get thousands and thousands, but uh, please know that I care and I appreciate you. Second Samuel 1, 1 through 16. I normally don't read all these, but I'm going to today. And like I said, time, I'm going to try to finish this out. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed in Ziklag for two days. On the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was when he came to David that he fell on the ground, prostrated himself, and he should before king or king to be plus a mighty warrior. Then David said to him, how did the matter go? He's talking about the war uh, with the Philistines that uh, Saul and Jonathan were in. Please tell me, and he answered this person, the people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, or did also. So you can read five, six, seven, eight, and the young person tells David how he knew this and that he actually was the one that Saul called and asked him to take his life because he did not want to be a wounded person and taken captive by the Philistines. So when David heard this, he tore, a verse 11, therefore David took hold of his own clothes and tore them. And so did all the men who were with him. So David had taught these mighty ones, the 600 of valor, uh, each could take on giants. But you also have a heart of humility and humbleness in you. So they fasted and they prayed. So he asked him further about what he had done and the young man had told him and also had the crown. And so this is what David told him and I am being obedient today. Go near and execute him, this messenger. Don't execute me. I'm just the messenger. But this is the heart of David that I have in speaking this message today. He struck him so they died. So then David said, your blood is on your own head. For your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. For those that are out there that are going to observe and watch and see, uh, I want a word of caution before I get into this. And this is the heart that I want you to have when you see in 2022, and I believe it has already began, the prophetic began to unfold. Uh, this will be called judgment in the house of God. First Samuel chapter one, and I will read this part, verse 19. This is how I would like those 
that follow and listen to just a simple Cajun. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Lest the daughter, daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. O mountains of Geboa, let there be no dew, nor rain upon you, nor fields of offering. For the shield of the mighty is defiled and cast away there. But David said that even though Saul was under a curse and had relentlessly tried to kill David physically, and many do this with their words, do not rejoice when you see individuals or ministries fall, lest the world, those that hate us anyway, begin to rejoice and say, I told you so. Pray and honor them for the Lord's anointed that they were at one time. Many were, some were never of the Lord and anointed, and they are going to be judged severely. I know several. Let not the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. How the mighty have fallen. Saul depicted in some movie, crown they would have in those days. How the mighty have fallen, fell in and Gath. So I want you to remember that as we start on this. Do not rejoice. Do not celebrate. Do not text and, and, and slander these people. But may your heart be a heart of compassion and mercy. And pray for the body of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. I'll spell this word because I don't want to butcher it. E-C-U-M-E-N-I-S-M. -E -E Ecumenical. <laughs> Ecumenical. I know the ecumenical community. We start with his judgment in the house of God. Look at John 17, 21. This has to be our heart. I pray that they will be one. This is Jesus speaking to our father. Just as you and I are one. As you are in me, father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. Our testimony of Jesus Christ and the agape that we have in us. Now, philo is the word in Greek for friendship and agape is unconditional love. That's the way they'll know us, not going after each other, not tearing each other down. There are many that have betrayed the faith and they will be judged, but let us not do that. Ecumenical. This term was first used in 1587, and I'll give you the Webster's Dictionary. Of relating to or representing the whole of a body of churches, promoting or tending towards worldwide Christian unity or cooperation. So I want you to maybe take that as a note. When I speak, it's over the ecumenical community of all religion, denominations, not all faiths, because Islam, and I told you about on the drag queen, that is a complete cult. Um, Buddhist, Hindu, I'm talking about those that follow Jesus Christ and believe Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that he was raised from the dead and he lives forevermore. That Jesus Christ and that group that follow Jesus Christ, the different denominations. 
as I said, for my Messianic Jew, Jewish friends, you know that he's already come and we're waiting for him to come but shortly. And for my other Jewish friends, I, I will have to tell you, you, the Messiah that you're looking for, he's already come. So keep that out in case I have to get back to it. That word ecumenism symbol was from a plaque in St. Anne's Church in uh, Augsburg, Germany. Uh, it shows Christianity as a boat at sea with a cross serving at its mast. Uh, this is Wikipedia, uh, also spelled, and he goes into the concepts. Uh, in the concept and principle of Christians who belong to different Christian denominations should work together to develop closer relationships among their churches and promote Christian unity. That's Wikipedia. The adjective ecumenical is thus applied to any interdenominational working together initiative that encourages greater cooperation between Christians and their churches. Wikipedia. <clears throat> this is that symbol. By the way, 1587, you can see the different people, but there's Calvary and there's Assembly of God and there's Church of Christ. There's the Catholic Church and Episcopal, Episcopalian, uh, Lutheran, uh, Baptist, Methodist. Uh, this is, when I talk about the true body of Christ are those within all of this that don't call themselves Christians. It's like <laughs> somebody had told me, you know, if I go stand, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. If I stand in the garage, it doesn't make me a car. Just because you go to a church building doesn't make you a Christian. So I'm talking about in these that are true Christians that follow Jesus Christ, that there are some in this that 2022, 20, 23 is the time of judgment. And it's going to begin with us. How is he going to judge the world, which he's going to in this year? And in the you'll see in the, the days ahead. But it also has to begin with us. I try not to use names. And there will be some that I do because they are public figures. And uh, a few that I will mention uh, are, are especially sad to me because of uh, a personal experience. And I'll, I'll share that with you. So this is January 22, 2022. This is, I try to redact the name, and this one is from this area, 2017. Uh, the Griffin Police Department said newsletter that Curtis 55, his last name is Y56, were running an unlicensed group home uh, under the guise of a church. And they give the name of it. What they found, uh, these caretakers, quote unquote, uh, were leasing property, property, <clears throat> were using their basement, a, person, a personal care home for individuals. Uh, they were imprisoned uh, against their will. Um, it was sad because uh, the ones that were in the basement were uh, mentally and or physically disabled. And uh, quoting this Griffin police, it is both frightening and disgusting to see the degree to which these individuals have been taken advantage of by people who were in a position of trust. So when I speak of these people and the Lord has shown me and took me through, he's taken me to the Vatican. Um, he's taken me to, to see that thing in Utah and other places, but this is, he just taught. December 12, 2018, a few years ago here, here in Dallas. So I, I, I want to show you this. This is widespread in this article for those that uh, are members. I, I include the URL so that you can look at these articles and, and read the entire article and, and see where it's from. But, so it says invest, investigating of the Fort Worth, the Fort Worth Star Telegram find uh, 400 allegations against 168 leaders. I don't know what my camera is doing. Please excuse me. It's the lack of the technical uh, gym right now. 
400 allegations against 168 leaders spanning almost 200 churches and institutions. Hundreds of women and men have accused leaders of independent fundamental Baptist churches of sexual misconduct. And it was published in, in the Fort Worth Star. The series uncovered 412 allegations of abuse across those churches. Um, I will just, 168 leaders, including some of the most prominent pastors among the group's thousands of U.S. congregations. It says, and I'll quote this, more than 130 of them have been found guilty of rape, kidnapping, sexual assault, and a litany of other crimes, with most victims being children and teens, according to what the investigation has uncovered. It said dozens of abusive pastors had multiple victims. One raped a girl that was 11 in his own congregation, and several had abused children as young as seven years old. And some of these uh, young girls were uh, repeatedly uh, violated by the same person and certainly had to have some type of help and assistance overcoming some type of trauma like that. So there is nothing wrong with being wealthy. But with great wealth comes great responsibility. Regardless of your rung on the income ladder, I must and you must remember that Jesus viewed wealth as a gift from God to be used in his service. The parable of the shrewd manager teaches us that God must be the most important person in our lives. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Luke 16, 13 through 31, if you want to see the parable. February 3, 2022. Revelation 3, 15 through 18. I have two different versions in the notes. I'll just read one. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold. That word is invigorating, refreshing. I'll read it all again in a minute. You're neither cold nor hot, where hot for is healing and therapeutic. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, spiritually useless, and neither hot nor cold, I will, the word is not spew, it's vomit. I will vomit you out of my mouth, rejecting you with disgust. Because you say I am rich and have prospered and grown wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, without hope and in great need. I always have mentioned spiritual and then physical, spiritual and then physical. I counsel you to buy from me gold that has been heated red hot and refined by fire so that you may become truly rich and white clothes representing true righteousness to clothe yourself so that the shame of your nakedness will not be seen and the healing salve to put on your eyes so that you may see. I'm going to talk about that healing salve. So let me read this without the interpretation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have prospered and grown wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind. I counsel you to buy from me gold that has been heated red hot and refined by fire so that you may become truly rich and white clothes to close yourself, clothe yourself. So the shame of your nakedness will not be seen and healing salve, S-A-L-V-E, to put on your eyes so that you may see. That's the Amplified. 
That word lukewarm, by the way, is a metaphor. I'll get into Laodicea. Uh, based on the quality of the water supply in Laodicea, and this is to show you in the prophetic words that the Lord gives to me and in teachings, uh, I believe I may have said last time, every word. He doesn't just speak in every word has a meaning and a place in the prophetic word uh, or in a teaching. When he said uh, this word lukewarm, he understood and knew the quality of the water supply for Laodicea. Uh, it was delivered by aqueduct from the hot mineral springs about five miles away. So they got it by aqueduct five miles. During his journey, the water cooled to a warm or lukewarm temperature. And prophetically for those in discernment, you can interpret that in, in many different ways. Uh, it took five miles for very hot, pure water to get to uh, the Laodiceans. Remember, the Lord started this entire uh, vision and teaching on the streams in the desert, pure, crystal clear streams. Uh, and he said, you want to drink from that? Said, Lord, I want to drink from that. Um, but in that journey, could be tests, could be trials, could be popularity, could be money, could be a lot of things. Maybe just difficulties, hardships, sickness, loss of a loved one, uh, your children going astray. There are so many things. And maybe that has caused me or, or, or you or any of us at one time or another to become lukewarm. I speak to me first, by the way, on all of this. I, I, I hear these pastors always talk about you. Uh, it begins with me first and my beautiful bride. Let me think <laughs> about Kimberly. People say you're beautiful bride. She is as beautiful day, uh, probably more so than when I married her. But when I talk about my beautiful bride, we dated for two years. And during that time, she became my best friend. Uh, her soul, her the beauty of her soul, of her heart, will last through eternity. So I call her my beautiful bride, not because of the outside only. She's very beautiful. But I, I don't think of those things, although I acknowledge it. It's her heart. It's her love for Jesus Christ, uh, that she loves me, that she loves Luke. And she's been like that. As I have told many, she's one of the few that the naive that I ever had ran into that was not, you know, corrupted in the world stuff, still needed salvation. All of us do. Needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I'll talk about that later on Monday. So Laodicea, the city of Laodicea was founded during the third century before Christ. It was located on a plateau, a feature which ensured it would be secure from enemy attack. The location would seemingly be ideal were it not for the city's vulnerable water supply. Go back to that water supply. And it said Laodicea depended on water from the neighboring city of, and I'll spell it, H-I-E-R-A-P-O-L-I-S. And that source was between five and six miles in distance. Uh, and this city was six miles to the north. Water from the hot springs of this city were piped through aqueduct, as I said. And it was tepid by the time it, it got there. So let me hit a few bullet points. It was a wealthy city and a financial center. Remember, these are the people that remember Revelation. He said, you're wealthy and you have need of nothing. And the Lord said, you're, you're a wretch, you're miserable, you're poor. A lustrous black wool was produced there, which was woven into much desired clothing. So there was a black wool from that area, and it was a clothing fashion desired throughout that whole part of the world. So it was wealthy. Going back to um, <laughs> eyes, and we talked a little bit about Jezebel and painting eyes last time. It was the location of a temple dedicated to, and I'll spell this, not Jesus Christ, not uh, Jehovah, A-K-A-S-K-L-E-P-I-O-S. -K -K I'm sorry. 
A S K L E P I O S. Associated with the temple was a medical school. It is also likely that a medicine known as a, and I'll spell, <laughs> spell this again, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> P H R Y G I A N powder. Was formulated in Laodicea. This pygrain power was used as an eye salve. So, do you believe that the eye salve that they were known for and the Lord's word to them through the prophetic, through John, talked about come to me and get true eye salve so that you may be healed and see? Well, just to teach you again how the Lord uses. And when you look at that scripture, when you're studying scripture, it, it, a lot of times we just read over. It. There is, when I, you, know, you read something like that, like, I wonder why he's using ISAB. Well, there was a reason for it. This whole area was known. Um, this A-S-K-L-E-P-I-O-N, uh, that word means to cut open. In Greek uh, mythology, this was the god of medicine. Kind of today if you think of medicine and those that are corrupted and compromised and have pushed on us um, a narrative and uh, Humpty Dumpty has uh, exceeded the Constitution and and now that the United States Supreme Court has ruled that I can say that I knew that all along uh, I think I've said it anyway so um, there are many many, many in healthcare and uh, doctors, physicians, specialists, nurses, uh, the people that drive these emergency vehicles, ambulances, uh, uh, medics on the ground. There are probably millions of them that are good, uh, decent uh, individuals that, that do their job and do it well, and they care about patients. There's also a, another layer that are, um, they don't think that way, put it, put it that way. So this was a temple dedicated to medicine. You remember I told you about the two-headed Komodo dragon. Theoretically, after his death, some of this god of medicine, he was placed among the stars as the constellation, this is entry, the serpent holder. Some say his mother was also uh, the, the crow in heaven, but interesting, if you look at medicine and the, and the sim, symbol for medicine, uh, there is a serpent, and this is the serpent holder, and this temple that was devoted to him. So that's Laodicea. Sad. So let me get into the areas that the Lord mentioned to me, and I went and researched. These were not um, these were prophetic words, but I will talk about others. We find today, you know it as well as I do, that there are many that. Uh, I had shared uh, the vision of the circuit riders and then the modern day circuit riders compared to the old circuit riders that were, were preachers that just went on horseback and spread the gospel. There are many that promote uh, on different platforms and in their buildings, I, some of them I don't want to call churches, in their buildings and at conferences and seminar, all those things, uh, bottles of holy water. And um, they say it's from the River Jordan. <clears throat> I am thankful for the River Jordan. And I know that people go there. Um, excuse me. People go there and look forward to being baptized in the River Jordan. If you Google uh, that and look at it, you probably would not want to be baptized in the River Jordan. Uh, it is not the crystal clear running water that you may have envisioned when John was there uh, and baptized Jesus. It certainly was. Today, 
It's not. So when they have this crystal clear water in a bottle that, that they want you to purchase from them at some exorbitant price, because it does all types of things for you. Uh, if they really had the water of the Jordan, it would be muddy looking. Healing cloth. These people want to sell you healing cloths that if you apply to yourself, you'll be healed. In 45 years, uh, maybe two years ago, the Lord came and said, I want you, Luke and Kimberly, to anoint three cloths and anoint it with oil, all three of you, every night and pray over it. And I'll tell you who to send them to. And I, I think it was like Fonzie on Happy Days Eating Liver. It was like, Lord, you know how I feel about those types of things. And he just simply said, do it. And I'm going to have you privately send these to someone with nothing in return. And I know who they are, but you don't yet. I said, okay, we can do that. And so we spent maybe several weeks, all three of us, would uh, anoint it with oil and in a cross. And it came saturated this red cloth that Kimberly went and bought and we um, prayed over it. And he told me um, who to give it to. And I, I actually said, what I want you to do is tell them to put it in their pillow behind their pillow in those pillow case or whatever it is and have them sleep on it. And um, he said, over a process of time, I'm going to heal them. And uh, I, I know who they are. And, I have sent a couple uh, fresh bottles of anointing oil that we had anointed it with so they could continue uh, in case it, uh, I had it in a, like a little baggy thing along with the scripture um, and the instructions of what the Lord told me to do. So they would know uh, not in the baggie, but the other, but it was in there. So it stayed tight, airtight. And then I gave it to them. So this is a good example. You can find it on the internet. If you would like a healing cloth mailed to you, send to, and this person, pastor gave his address. Be sure to include your name and full mailing address. Um, this is on their website, so I'm going to read it. The healing cloth you requested has been anointed and prayed over by our ministry team in the healing rooms, not room, rooms. Know that the very measure of anointing that flows in the healing room as we lay hands on the sick, is in this cloth. As cloths were sent out from Apostle Paul's touch to bring healing, so also these cloths shall bring healing as they are applied to you. And they put this scripture down, Acts 19, 11 and 12, quoting from their website. God gave Paul the power to do unusual miracles, so that even when handkerchiefs or cloths that he had touched his skin were placed on sick people. They were healed of their diseases and any evil spirits within them came out. End of quote, end of the scripture. Please let us know about your healing so that we may post it and give the father glory for what Jesus has done. Here's a testimony they gave Jerry name or anything, was given a healing cloth because he had cancer of the throat and lungs. He was on a feeding tube at home. He was not expected to live much longer. The prayer healing cloth was placed on his throat. The throat cancer disappeared, which was confirmed by his doctor, and the lung cancer started to recede. No documentation, no... Let me say this, I absolutely believe in healing. And if the Lord has you uh, anoint a, a, a handkerchief or a cloth and send it or you receive one, it's not the cloth. It's your faith in Jesus Christ, anointing of the Holy Spirit that will heal you. I cannot heal when I sent it to these people and, and gave it to them. I have no healing power within myself. The only thing I can do is allow the Holy Spirit to flow through me. And it is the Holy Spirit who can heal. Not me, not other men, not other women. And some of these things are simply 
to fleece the sheep. Here's another. Endless conferences. At least, you know, now that I think Kimberly and Luke are blocking a lot of it, these things come weekly, not only to attend, but to speak at some. <laughs> and, and the costs are amazing uh, of these things. And I, I believe that if, if a three-day conference is going to satisfy everything you need for the day, why hasn't it done it over the last 10 years while they've had these conferences every year? Uh, you say, well, it's a new group of people. No, same group of people who go to the same conferences. Same result. I'm going to quote this, by the way. He's a false shepherd. I redacted in the, in the, uh, even in the, the notes for the members. But you can Google uh, America Need Revival 2020. There's an article. So I redacted the author. Quoting him, using my time wisely means more to me than ever before. I am realizing with greater intensity that I have just one life, and I want it to count for Christ. I am never at a loss for how much to fill my time, but I am constantly choosing between good things and the best things. That sounds very good, and I, and I appreciate that. Continue quoting him. One of the projects to which I'm delighted to devote my time is our annual, every year, spiritual leadership conference. This is not just one more activity to fill a calendar. It is a highlight event designed to equip each person who attends to greater potential for service to the Lord. That is very nice. For our church, this conference is not one of many options on a calendar. It is a, quoting again within the quotes, a must have. Following are 10 reasons why I believe we need spiritual leadership conferences. Uh, this article was from 2010, and I'm assuming before that they had many of these spiritual leadership conferences, and it was a must-have. And so since then, now we're in 2022, uh, these conferences continue uh, for, I won't say all, but many of them It's an opportunity to sell their stuff, books, get some money for the conference. Vendors are there. Many of them have to pay for booths. Uh, certainly, they have a table there to sell all their stuff. So, I salve up today. I'll show you this. Phoning water from the Jordan. Mass-produced handkerchiefs and prayer cloths. Recycled books with a few words changed. Maybe a new chapter and cover. Flowery, watered-down messages to tickle the ear and give a momentary feeling of bliss. So greedy shepherds, these celebrities, can once again fleece the sheep and continue their luxurious lifestyle. Revelation 3.18 and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that you may see. He's talking about the word of God and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to get into some of these as we move forward. Who was the pool of Laodicea? Great. Pretty um, bottle of water. On the Jordan, prayer cloths. This is all these books. They just, one book after another, they'll change a few chapters or the cover on it, add a few more words and recycle it and sell it. And you better buy it if you follow them. So, and this one is prophetic conference word for 2022, registered now. And it had urgent written across this one. This one came through, I believe, on my phone. This is the lifestyle, and I'll show you more of that. As I said in the beginning, it's not about wealth. I'm not against wealth. Um, <laughs> we went through seven years, and as I said, lost our home and everything else. But those that the Lord has blessed, I am thankful. 
And in the next few weeks, I, I will talk about Christian businesses that are owned or operated that uh, I won't, and I'll, I'll mention it at that time. Uh, we're going to uh, list those out that are legitimate. We're going to verify and confirm. <coughs> Excuse me again. <clears throat> the businesses and then have our wisdom warriors and our select intercessory teams uh, pray over your business every day because I know how difficult it is. Uh, some of the larger uh, farms and ranches that uh, produce uh, will also put in that. Not so that I'll have your address and write you. I promise you there will be no donation request or anything sent to you. We simply know that in this hour, the Lord has pressed upon me uh, to pray for those Christian business owners. You're under attack, uh, the farmers, uh, ranchers. Uh, so I'll talk about that another time. So I will mention these by name. And this is part of what the Lord told me to look at. Uh, he did not mention these individuals by name. Uh, I looked through this because he did talk about uh those that are fleecing the sheep, uh, if one of these happens to be someone that you idolize, uh, if someone says something about them, you take it personally, then uh, you probably need to stop watching now because my position with the Lord is to do what he tells me to do. Um, sin is sin. Uh, people that fall into sin are sin. Are people that are misusing his that wealth that they have been given, um, and in two in particular. Uh, this is on um, two URLs. They'll be in the notes. And it listed out a few of the wealthiest pastors in America. <clears throat> Their wealth, by the way, is underestimated in these articles. Not only do they have personal wealth, but their 501c3 ministries, more than one sometimes, uh, cars, houses, clothes, uh, insurance, medical, all of that is covered. Uh, and salary, th this is personal wealth. So I'll start on the list. This is public information. And if you're good with it, that's okay. I'm just presenting what I was told to present. And that is for you to look at. And between these people and God, I am not judging these people for the wealth they have. I will show you the lifestyle they live, their wealth, and leave that to you. But I know in 2022, 2023, I'm not saying this list. Well, there's a few on it that they're, they're time. Kenneth Copeland says 760 million. Actually, it's well over a billion. And I'll talk about another person. And I did these in alphabetical order, by the way, so that you don't, you know, you, you read so much into what I say. These are in alphabetical order. Kenneth Copeland, 760 million. Creflo Dollar, 27 million. Jesse Duplantis, 20 million. Billy Graham, who I grew up Baptist, I respect and admire Billy Graham, uh, loved his crusades, his heart. I believe that Billy Graham is enjoying his time with Jesus right now. And uh, I, I loved uh, uh, Mr. Graham, Pastor Graham, and now his son, um, Franklin. And we have uh, supported uh, these little shoe boxes and stuff that they uh, made when I was in the marketplace and had the funds, a Samaritan's Purse and others. Uh, but his worth, um, uh, Billy Graham now with Franklin is 25 million. That's not including the ministry and the, the jet and all the other stuff. Benny Hinn, which I'll talk about a little further, uh, for a particular reason, 
says his wealth is uh, 42 million. That is tremendously underestimated. You probably could triple some of these people. Locally, TD Jakes, 20 million. That, again, I'll just, these are very low estimates of these people. And they have investments in theater and real estate and so many different areas. It's hard to track that down, but this is according to their personal wealth. So TD Jakes, 20 million. Joyce Meyer, 8 million. Joel Osteen, 40 million. I'll talk about Joel in just a few minutes. Pat Robertson, 100 million. Well, Pat is well over a billion, and I'll show you why. And then Rick Warren, 25 million. So let me speak of the 700 Club. And I know that many, many of you have followed the 700 Club. And I pray that many of you were saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe many of you were healed. What I'm going to show you is the truth. You can accept it or not. When I talked about the Eucharist in the Catholic Church and how it was proven uh, in labs and, and by chemists, many said, I still choose to believe it changes. And that's, that's okay. I wasn't trying to persuade you one way or another. I was just giving you the facts. The same thing when I presented the facts on those that were found guilty by the international courts uh, in, in the Vatican, uh, you know, the Black Pope and, and all those assistants with him. When I say the Black Pope, that's not his color. That is, uh, there is the regular Pope, and then there is a Black Pope. That's his position over the Jesuits. And I talked extensively about that. So there's a URL. This is the former producer of the 700 Club. I, I won't. He formerly a producer for Pat Robertson's 700 Club, but soon became disillusioned with the brand of theocracy. In fact, he was so incensed with Robertson's demagoguery that he authored a book called Salvation for Sale, which exposes Robertson for the fraud that he is. This speech was delivered at a meeting in America in 1995. That's how far back it goes. So I know that Luke tells me you can go on the internet, look at all. I'm going to give you facts, not internet stuff and, and, and hearsay. These are facts on three individuals. The others, you can choose how you want, and even on these. This is an article going back. And it's in the notes. I'll just, the URL and the person who wrote it. Reverend, quoting the headline, Robert, Reverend Robertson, CBN's founder, sells out to Murdoch's sleazy empire. And I will read that. The campus. Personal home, which does not include the Eskrin farm where he keeps all his horses and where he invests in racehorses. Uh, Mr. Robinson loves racehorses. This will get into this put on here. Bohemian Grove. And the Lord took me one time actually twice to the Bohemian Grove when they were doing their owl thing. Uh, there were, and he would show me particularly, uh, like Colin Powell was one of them. Like, but many people that I recognized, some I was surprised at, others, the ones I was surprised at were several that were in the ministry that were there. This guy didn't surprise me at all. Dark state, not even dark. Might be, but the Lord hadn't told me. So let me read this article. The internationalist king of sleazy TV and America's richest televangelist 
have yoked together in one of the biggest media deals over the years. So I told you his personal wealth is over a billion. Millions of God-fearing Christians know Reverend Pat Robertson and the genial television televangelist host of the 700 Club broadcast on the Family Channel. Others know Robertson as the founder of International Family Entertainment, the parent corporation of the Family Channel, the stated purpose of which is to return to primetime programming, such traditional fare as the Waltons, Bonanza, the Beverly Hillbillies, Gunsmoke, and other old shows that an entire family could watch and watch together. Yes, and, and it's what I grew up watching in Lassie, Leave It to Be There, Little Rascals. No profanity, none of the stuff you see today. Robertson also comes about as close to being a member of the American, uh, the elites, the, the, the aristocrats, as anyone alive which is a major reason for the well-disguised contempt he has held long held for average Americans. I'm reading the article. This is not me putting words in. He is the son of the late Senator Willis Robertson, a Democrat who represented represent Virginia in the Senate from 1949. I don't know what's happened to my camera. To 1967. The Robertson family traces lineage to two U.S. presidents, William Henry Harrison, Benjamin Harrison and the Churchill family of England. Robertson is also a descendant of England's Duke of Marlborough, and he's a graduate of Yale Law School. You'll know that the individual that came out of that casket, skull and bones, it's another Yale grad. The other one had uh, tobacco in his mouth and, and cowboy boots and had war, another skull and bones. By the way, so is John Kerry. These people. You know, they seem to oppose each other, but every year they get together in a big meeting of skull and bones, uh, husbands, wives, all of them get together and, you know. <laughs> like his distant relative, Sir Winston Churchill, the preacher is very much an internationalist and an enthusiastic Zionist, although he has made a career of posing as a uh, pretend popular pseudo populist. Most Americans are unaware of this masquerade and does not speak well of the ability of U.S. citizens to discern what's going on. I'm quoting this lady. Keith Murdoch, founder and majority shareholder of New News Corporation, has also on more than one occasion posed as a booster of Christian values. <laughs> well, backing not only the Israeli government, which is considering a measure to outlaw Christian missionary activity, but also producing and broadcasting some of the most morally offensive programs on television today. So let me, I'll come back to the article on Mr. Robertson. We talk about this person who, by the way, that's Sky Network in Europe that he was trying to take over. <laughs> so, According to Forbes, he is the 31st richest on the list and real time 2 2 2022. Uh, his worth was personal worth 21.6 billion. And I'll read just a little bit on Mr. Murdoch so you know who Pat Robertson agreed to sell his network to. Many have asked about Disney. Disney eventually bought out Fox, and I'll cover that. Rupert Murdoch controls a media empire that includes cable, channel Fox News, the Times of London, the Wall Street Journal. He sold most of Fox's movie studio, FX, and National Geographic Networks, and his stake in Star India to Disney, March of 2019. For $71.3 billion, his son, Lachan, L-A-C-H-L-A-N, runs the new Fox, which consists of its broadcast, 
cable news, business, sports networks. Interesting. This is on the dad, Rupert. He urged liberal Mike Bloomberg to run for president against Donald Trump. Remember I told you, and I'll say it again, when it comes to these elites, and when you go from dark state to evil state, and I gave you the book of the list and others, watch for the divorce rates. Uh, many times, the spouse, one way or the other, mostly the women, they, they don't go along with it. $1.2 billion that this former wife, and I have her name, was Rupert Murdoch's second wife for 32 years until their eventual divorce in 1999. So he had to pay $1.2 billion. Uh, and I think he's, I don't know how many, third one, wife, fourth wife now. So another one that has this large uh, internet that you can go purchase things on. As I said, watch for divorces. 2017, as part of the settlement, this particular man's wife will get 25% of the couple's stock. And it's on the New York Stock Exchange. Big internet, you can go buy anything there. It's not eBay. According to a securities filing, that should give her a 4% stake in the company, which will amount to about $38 billion. So to get a divorce, not too many people want to give up $38 billion, but if you were made wealthy because of uh, particular covenants, you're told what to do. So she received $38 billion, even with a settlement, this person and the founder is currently at that time one of the richest individuals in the world. Estimated wealth is um, $118 billion, according to Bloomberg billionaire indexes, 118 billion after giving 38 billion to get his divorce. But that's not the end of it. As of July 20, 2022, this year, last year, sorry. we're not even in July yet. On Forbes, you may find of interest the previous broadcast and often decisions that are forced upon them. The dark and evil state, uh, the bill always comes due with these individuals. So even with his divorce this year, July 20, 2021, this person is worth one hundred and seventy seven billion. The only one on this list I am not sure about, but I haven't asked and I don't ask unless he comes to me and tells me is. I just I don't know. Let me use his first name, E.L.O.N. A particular company, one hundred fifty one billion. Bill are person said he would make 200 billion off the vaccine uh, as of today probably not including all of that or 2021 124 billion mark with that particular internet 97 billion and i will mention this person's name uh an evil individual, Warren Buffett. People in Omaha and others that love him, don't write me. I've seen things of this person and, and, and know a dear friend of mine that um, 
has had to deal with this evil thing for years. And finally they won, thankfully, but with these people, you never win because you don't know what they're going to do next. And the others on that, I just, you know, when I'm thinking of the prayers, I want to thank my friend in at Detroit, Michigan. She and her entire prayer network have, have been praying for me and praying for Kimberly and Luke. Uh, they pray all the time, but especially during this uh, stuff. So uh, she just came to mind because of the prayer time and a, a godly woman. So I, I wanted to, to thank her and her prayer network throughout the country. So back to Pat Robertson. Judeo-Christian values mocked. Murdoch's Fox Broadcasting produces and airs Married with Children, which, while amusing to some, gets its laugh at the expense of mocking the very values held dear by the viewers of Reverend Robertson's Family Channel. Other Fox shows include Beverly Hills, 90210, Melrose Place, which glorify everything from youth drug culture to homosexuality couples to divorce. Under the $1.4 billion deal between Murdoch and Robertson, Murdoch's new corporation will own the controlling interest of international family entertainment. Now remember, he sold all this stuff to Disney later. What this tells us about the priorities of Robertson is that he is far more interested in being wealthy than in religion. That in, is unless he is selling religion, <laughs> according to her, this is the article, still reading it. Former White House political director Ed Rollins, now a leading GOP political consultant, said of Robertson, he's a businessman. The product he sells is religion. So what the world, when they see all this stuff, they know. Other observers of Robertson argue that Robertson lubricates his deals with snake oil. I don't like reading all this stuff. So let me read this. This is part of the facts. The prospectus he issued to investors during the initial public offering with IFE stock was first offered to investors, he said, quoting him, in the event of a merger or consolidation of all classes of shareholders, all shareholders shall be entitled to receive the same per share consideration. This is what he told them in the prospectus, his shareholders, and, and many of the shareholders were Christians. Yet under the proposed deal, the former presidential candidate and his son, Timothy Robertson, together with control of the, they together with control Class A shares, which carries 10 times the voting power of the publicly traded Class B shares. And you can see this in a, a news group called Spotlight. Taking full advantage of this discrepancy, Robertson's have arranged to get 200 million or nearly $40 a share, while all the other stockholders will get about $25 a share. Murdoch and Robertson are merely the latest internationalist who like Churchill and other successful politicians and businessmen have succeeded while getting large support from the trusting yet unknowing populist audience to which their policies and business and titles set out to do the most harm. It says they benefit and the working class gets hurt or the Christians that barely have the money to give to some of these ministries and they live. And I'll show you these other two. Robertson Alva carries in office the rank hypocrisy and blatant contempt for ordinary Americans, the very type who are likely to invest in his empire to a new level, as chairman of IFE and the primary beneficiary of the sale to Murdoch, Robertson has little regard for the one of the golden rules of running a public corporation. Thou shall not cut yourself a better deal than the rest of the stockholders. End of quote and end of the article. And I had shown it to you. So let me get to two more that I have personal thought on. John Olstein. Was a good man. I had met him several times at Bethany uh, Church there in Baker when uh, 
Reverend Roy Stock still was the pastor. And I had been saved in 1976 and uh, in and through college uh, attended uh, Bethany, especially during their missionary week. And uh, they gave 10% of, of their any of their income always to missions. They were mission oriented. And so John had come in from Houston and, and preached. And when John preached, it was preaching. It was uh, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, speaking in a, a, a different language. Um, a prayer language, uh, sin, repentance. This was a godly man. And I appreciate when I had the opportunity and the honor of meeting him. Let me say this uh, as it comes to my heart. When you love Jesus Christ and you ask Jesus into your heart and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, you may have the gift of tongues uh, and you may have the gift of tongues and it's like me. I would have never been able to have the gift of another language if it hadn't been in the very particular circumstances the Lord put me. My brain operates too much. As I said, I have an MBA in finance. It's too analytical. And so even all of the things I do, uh, spiritual things, is completely opposed to the brain, but it matches up with my heart, which is, I tell you, in the soul. So if you are a Christian and anyone tells you that you're not saved because you do not have a prayer language or it has not been developed yet, please accept it. Cause I, I know there are uh, dear loved ones and there are friends that are uh, going to be in heaven with us. that do not have a prayer language. Those that do, I, I'm thankful. Uh, I pray. I hope that you uh, use that language privately. As Paul said, uh, I'll leave it with that. So let me get to Joel. They say sometimes, what's that saying? The um, apple fell close to the tree, and sometimes the apple fell far from the tree. I'll let you make that decision. But I met John. Don't care to meet this person. So John had found... Uh, in 1959, uh, Lakewood Church from an old feed store, and I have a couple pictures, uh, and he turned that into his church. And he was, like I said, a dynamic preacher. And so let me, this slide has two. Um, this is where feed store was, and this is John. Nineteen fifty nine. This is Joel's house in Houston. I don't know how many others he has. I didn't put in the jet. Uh, some of the cars, the expense of some of the cars, but that's uh, so. That was his his dad, and, and I bring that up because I had met his dad, and when I see this person. Uh, personal wealth, uh, the lifestyle, and know that there are people that are fluent and give, they can give anything they want. What hurts is, is makes me sad is when I see uh, people that really don't have uh, that much to give and, and they, they give and, and they're fools. So I'll let you make that decision. But I, I wanted to speak about that one because of, um, I'd met John and he was a, he was a good man and I'm sure he's, Enjoying Jesus right now. Benny Hinn. Last one. This article um, by old Anthony. And I probably put it away because I'm <laughs> going through my notes. Old Anthony uh, runs a Trinity, and I'll, I'll get those up before I send them to Greg. And he asked in that article, uh, where did the $30 million go to? Uh, and I have something on here to quote. Uh, but actually, it was $34 million. I lived in Irving in, uh, near where he was. Supposed he was going to build a um, healing museum uh, and more to dedicate some of it to people like Catherine Kuhlman. And let me say about Catherine Kuhlman, Catherine Kuhlman was an imperfect vessel. 
the way that I'm an imperfect vessel. Uh, she went through a lot of personal things in her life, but what a woman of God, what a jewel of God. Um, I, I never met her, but I would have loved to have attended some of the services in Pittsburgh. Uh, this was to me a truly uh, wonderful woman of God. And Kimberly, uh, uh, with her healing gift, she has read every book and I think watched every videotape available. And she loves Miss Miss Kuhlman um, and and respects her as the woman of God that that she was, and uh, influenced and and so many were healed uh, by the Holy Spirit through her. One thing that I know that and and it just she loved Holy Spirit. She loved Jesus Christ. Um, as far as this person saying he he received her uh, anointing, I, I don't think so. But when he was asked, uh, and I'll tell you what happened, where the thirty million dollars had gone to, where was the museum? His response said, uh, "God said not now." Uh, actually, he said, hey, "God changed his mind, and, and now is not the time." Okay, so God told you to raise all this money, build this museum, and you centered it in the spotlight around people like. Catherine Kuhlman, uh, I think Brenham and some others, and, and you were going to, it was going to be a place for people to come to and he, all that kind of stuff. You know how they do. Never happened. And so old Anthony Trinity uh, Foundations, <laughs> here's another one. And old Anthony is the one that uh, exposed Robert Tilton and, and so many others. I know a lot about Robert Tilton. <laughs> so Dawn Ennis, E-N-N-I-S, and I'll quote this. There's more fraud in the name of God, not just in America, but in the world, than any other kind of fraud. This is old Anthony said, who operates the Trinity Foundation. He's been watching the Trinity Broadcasting Network's phony faith healers for decades. Hen announced way back in 1999 that he was building a 30 million, well, he got that wrong, it's 34, a million dollar healing center in Irving, Texas. At the time, it's by three miles from my house. He raised millions of dollars, but the center was never built. What happened to the money? Same thing that always happens. He goes to meet the needs of Benny and his confidants, stated old Anthony, Trinity Foundation. And this was printed uh, by this lady. The article. This is uh, one of Benny's houses, California. This is his plane. This is his Ferrari. I don't know how many houses these people have, but these are the prime ones. They travel all over the world, they call it ministry, go to every city they want, Paris. I think when they raided um, Benny Hinn's office here, I think it was in Paris, France, doing something. So I bring those two up, Joel and, and Benny, because of the association I have with not only John, but this was local and with the Catherine Kuhlman and, and, and our love for her and respect for her. This was a especially egregious uh, like I said, it, it, you can be wealthy, and, and I pray the Lord bless you, and use it however you want. Uh, if you are in the world, uh, for many that are followers of Jesus Christ, uh, he has blessed you with a uh, an ability to live a luxurious lifestyle, and, and you can. While at the same time, I, I hope and pray that you understand that uh, Part of your wealth is so that you can help others. And I understand the difficulty is, who is it that I help that's not a fraud? Same thing with trying to get a word from God or, or healing. Who is it nowadays, because there's so many out there, that they sound good, they seem good, uh, and they're not. And just, I showed you where a guy cuts a, $1.4 billion deal to this guy, Bohemian Grove person. 
And then he sells out to Disney and you know, at Disney, you know, it's not Walt, it's, as I said before, Walt didn't envision, at least I was talking about the Sam's. I don't think, <coughs> excuse me, that Walt Disney envisioned what it has become today. Father, I've done my best to present what you have shown me when I have the honor and <laughs> That's the humbleness of having Jesus show me things and teach me things and then to expose things. Uh, you know that I never asked to be uh, a prophet, Lord. I just wanted to just love you and, and to love Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and we do. And I thank you that you have blessed me with just a beautiful wife. Uh, and a wonderful son that love you with all their heart and all their mind. I pray for those that are watching, Lord, that if they've been offended, I just pray, Lord, that they pray about it and, and ask you to speak to them. And if it's not for them, that's okay. But if it is for them, give them the courage and the strength to make a difficult decision. Uh, it's not about men or women or particular broadcast. Uh, and, and we really can't justify it by saying, well, a few people got saved in that. Satan always sprinkles uh, his falsehoods with truth. He did that with Jesus, your son, as you know, when he was being tested in, in the wilderness. And I'm so grateful that Jesus, the, you know, he came back with your word, his word, the living word, and defeated him. So thank you for your presence today with us. Thank you for this year of intimacy with Jesus, your son. Thank you for this year of restoration. Thank you for this year, Lord, of refreshing. And on the other hand, thank you for this year of judgment, not only in what they call your house, throughout different denominations, my judgment will begin across this nation and around the world. Thank you, Father. We love Jesus. Thank you again. I'm not for sure about my camera today. I'll see what, what, what is, happened with it. I, I hope and pray the broadcast came through. And I'll see you about Saturday. I would love to give you an update and speak of a few things. But he must allow me to do those. So thank you for your time. I pray for you. Uh, those I mentioned, we are praying. And for your families, your loved ones, uh, your companies, uh, the healthcare workers that are under these terrible mandates, we need you. America needs our healthcare workers, the good ones. And then we pray for the eagle, the United States of America. So until I see you again, God bless.